I have to play the Hulkster. Did you catch that? 23 was it. Hogan, 2009. Look at this. He's calling for it. Those of you that are familiar with Hulk, he's calling for a game right now. <laughs> oh, everybody should be fearful. I think, um, is the assassin here on Chess Cube? I always seem to reference that everybody should fear the assassin. This is another guy that everybody should fear right now. Hogan. Oh, Hogan is coming right out and throwing the orangutan at me. The Polish. Sokolski opening. All right. What do you do in response to the orangutan? Wow. Let's try this. Now, this is new to me. It's called the outflank variation, apparently. My move right here is regarded as the outflank variation. All right. If you say so. The outflank. Let's try this. <laughs> ah, what's happening here? What's going on? The H file is ready to be peeled open. If bishop b2, queen b6. And if a3, then a5. I think I was talking about this recently because uh, I played b4 myself and I was talking about how c6 and then uh, the queen coming out to b6 or a5 idea might be available. I need more development. What better to do with my king knight than go here? Now what? I might want to try b5. Looks a little silly, but I might want to do it. I might want to be a little bit silly. d5, bishop here, give up my light square bishop and plant my pawns on light squares might be good. Let's go, pawn. Be a contributor. Contribute to the center. Get out here, bishop. You know you want to play the game. Compromised pawn structure. I have uh, some... Uh, I have some what? I have some experience with this structure right here, just this group of pawns. I also want to back up because I'm not going to be so quick to give up my light square bishop because he might want to hang out here and act as a defender. Let's go. This pawn could become isolated real soon. And uh, that's what we're going to have ha happen here aren't we? So let's do this and I want to do what? It's really open right here and guess who uh, is not happy about that? I'm not happy about that because my king is still not doing anything great. Uh, my dark square bishop could come out. Maybe this was a foolish move. Waste of time. Waste of time. Or is it? This pawn is going to be a target. I might want to just give him up though. Who cares about that pawn, right? I care about him. Um, if I do this, then a3 is played, and then if I take the pawn, I'm in a pin. Let's not do that. So what do you do? If you play here, the knight gives you a problem. And if you play here, well, maybe that's not so bad. Okay, with this I'm saying, let's go, ladies. Let the ladies come off. We're about even with time, myself and the Hulkster. The Hulkster is calling for a game here. Three minutes, ten seconds. A small time advantage here. Small. Um, what else? What else? What else? What else? Less than three. Be very scared. My bishop wants to be here. Be disruptive. Be disruptive. Develop. The rook is hit. I might want to consider queenside castle. Can you believe that? Believe it. It might be a good idea. Oh, this is scary. I might want to just say, you know what? Who cares about the b-pawn? Let's focus on this guy and get castled. And I think I do want to castle uh, because it's still a bit too... Oh! Ooh, 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 ooh! Sorry if I got loud right there. That happens. Don't listen with headphones. I say that once in a while. So if I play here, what was uh, sparking that? Those little 
ooze. <laughs> Was that my, I could get my bishop here and these rooks end up looking silly. So just do it if you're going to, don't talk about it, do it. How many of you were saying that? Quit your talking about it, just do it. Whoa! Talk about an unexpected move. <laughs> White says, no, I will fork your rook. And I say, you could do that, but I will get that A-pawn. Maybe there was something better. Maybe there wasn't. But I'm going to go for this because I'm seeing a clear way to grab this A-pawn. It's official. I got a pig on the second. And a wild past B-pawn. Now... This knight is ready to be pounced on, and I don't know if I like that. Um, king up, pawn push, my candidate moves. Pawn push, this is weak. So what? It can't be targeted, can it? Rook here, king here. I get out of a pin. Bishop takes, pawn takes. The pawns are restored, but I don't have a passed pawn anymore, so I think it's uh, going to be all right. Uh, what's this knight's future? Because I'm ready to kick him away and then grab that pawn. Okay, we have a pressing forward in the center. I can no longer rely upon my knight to defend my e5 pawn. It's my king that now needs to play such a role. And now, this square right here, if it doesn't have your attention, it should. And now it shouldn't. Because <laughs> this is no longer support point for a knight. So my plan here, this is a passed pawn now with that last sequence of pawn exchanges. I want to take this knight out and then push my C pawn to victory lane. Touchdown square right here on C1. Looking for the end zone. C5, C4, C3, C2. Can I just do those back to back to back like that? Or is that a little bit too uh, silly for me to be thinking I could do such a thing? I don't think so. I'm okay with parting with my light square bishop as a rule. Capture towards the center unless you have a good reason not to. Guess what? I do not have a good reason not to run with that. Let's go. I don't have a good reason not to continue to push forward with my passed pawn, and I still don't have a good reason to not continue forward with this passed pawn. In fact, it could turn out to be connected passed pawns in a blink. Right? The D pawn is going to be an animal. Two pawns on the third rank, or two, yeah, two black pawns on the third, or two white pawns on the sixth, usually do what? They translate into a rook. King up, king position. The king is a fighting piece. Be a fighter. Pawn push, rook here, attack the pawn. Let's go, pawns. And what next? Okay, now is the time here. Now is the time for just one accurate move. Um, hmm. Just checking something out here. Okay, I just I could play all the way back to the corner. If I play here, the rook has to play behind it. I'm just I'm just gonna play here. No, yeah, I'm gonna play to the corner. And now I'm ready to just push here, push here, and then score. There's nothing that can be done. All right. These guys are very strong. This one right here, that way I could play here and shoulder off the king. No good solution. I'm pretty sure there's just no good solution. So I think I just keep pushing. Two different queens. Enough time to convert it. Definitely enough time. Unless there is the Comcast Gambit. I'm going to give that up. I'm up a rook in this resulting position. Actually, wait. What was more accurate is to maybe throw in a check or something, but however you slice it, that was going to be good. All right, good game. Let me back up, and let's see about what. Let's see about how either one of us could have uh, done otherwise here. Um, 
Interesting, interesting opening. This is this is the second game in a row now where I think uh, I'm just... I've never seen it before. Just like three moves in. Um, so what's the scoop here? Be aware of this idea in response to b4. I think it's... It's maybe best. The c6, this very calm move, c6, allowing for this a5 or queen b6 idea. Um, so, I mean, now there's, you know, this is a potential target, but we enter a structure right here where I don't know if I should have uh, been able to get away with things like I did. So I think this is what? What, what can we say about this position? The rook move I think was good right here to b1 and I was starting to feel comfortable right now as soon as the rook went here. So this is, is there something better first and foremost right now? Something other than rook to b1 seems right. But after this, what about maybe instead of taking the queen, what about rook to b2? Something tells me you definitely have to keep pressure on this weak point, otherwise I have very little worry. So I wonder if just immediately responding to the bishop threat or capturing the queen and then rook to b2. I like rook to b2 right here. Rook b2 and then, you know, because cause, um, what, what are the differences between the two? You know, do you play queen takes and then rook b2 or just rook b2 right away? I think you just play rook b2 right away reason for this is because you're not helping black develop their dark square bishop so rook, rook to b2 is probably an improvement right here and i don't know as a follow-up what i would really have i have to be cautious about my kingside structure i also have to be cautious about giving up let's say my light square bishop if the queens are still going to be on the board because i'm i'm considering this guy as a key defender for my eventual kingside castled position Um, so I, 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 I turn out to be better here. And the alternatives, I guess, the rooks have to go to sad squares. So maybe, actually, you'd have to go to e1 or f1 to maintain the material. If you play here, then it's, uh, it's actually trapped. So the rooks' the decision at this point, e1, f1, or to go in for the variation. Knight to b5, which is allowing me to get a pawn. So I don't know, those earlier points, the, the rook to b2 move, maybe that's just a very small but important uh, improvement there. Uh, who knows for sure, though. Uh, all right. Let me close out. Good game, Hogan. And uh, let's get another one in here.